We're now going to look at uh, what are called conformal transformations, and this is the ability to take flow in um, in one plane, in one complex plane, and transform it into flow in a different plane. So um, let's start off with uh, with a, a real and imaginary axis here, and we're going to call this the zeta plane. Okay. And we want to transform the flow from the zeta uh, a complex um, coordinate system to um, to a, a different plane called the z-plane, okay? And this also has uh, real and imaginary axes. Um, okay, so uh, just, for, just for the sake of argument, we're going to look at this on a cylinder. Um, so let's say in the zeta plane we have some cylinder and uh, we have flow over that cylinder um, and uh, we want to uh, translate that to flow which we've already done actually in a previous uh, um, in, a, in a previous lesson uh, by by rotating and uh, and translating okay so um, so this is a simple rotation and translation, but in general, we can do this between a zeta plane and a z plane. So the flow in the zeta plane, we're going to call that uh, capital V1 of zeta. So that's our complex uh, potential, and then our complex velocity is W of zeta. And what we'd like to do is um, look at uh, capital V2 which is a function of z, and uh, w2 as a function of z. So v1 and w1 refer to our zeta plane flow in as a function of zeta, and v2 and w2 uh, refer to our z plane um, as a function of z, okay? Okay, so um, we'd like to find some mapping between the two where we can say uh, phi 2 is equal to, and, and remember that's a function of z, I'll put that in there. So phi 2 of z is equal to phi 1 of zeta, uh, and we're going to say that zeta is a function of z. Okay? Uh, well, if that's true, if zeta is... If, if zeta and z can be related uh, through some function or, or some mapping, then uh, we can take the derivative of v2, so w2, uh, with respect to z. Remember, w2 is just the derivative. Um, the, the derivative of v2 uh, with respect to z. And... Uh, and we can write that as the derivative of phi 1 uh, with respect to zeta times d zeta dz. Okay? Well, we know that the derivative of phi 1 with respect to zeta is just w1. So we've got w1 of zeta times uh, d zeta dz, and we can actually just rewrite that as w1 of zeta divided by dz d zeta, okay? So in general, um, the, the, the complex velocity here in the, in the z-plane is related to the complex velocity in the zeta-plane, uh, divided by dz d zeta, where dz d zeta is a transformation between zeta and z. Remember that, that zeta is a function of z. This is what we uh, assumed here. Okay, so um, so these are our general solutions, and we're going to just apply uh, this equation here actually over and over for different types of transformations. So let's actually work through an example right now for uh, rotation and translation. So uh, rotation and translation. And we've already done this in a previous video, but you didn't see it in from this perspective. 
So uh, for rotation translation, what we said was that um, the flow, uh, if we now are looking at this, this, uh, this zeta plane, which is our original, um, uh, our original flow, and we want to transform that now over to the z plane, where that has been transformed somehow. So what we said um, was that the flow in the z plane was equal to the zeta times e to the i alpha. So we rotated it, and then we translated it by z naught. Okay, so z naught would be uh, this point here, z naught, um, and uh, and alpha would be the angle that we rotated that flow by. Okay, so so now here we've got a a z as a function of zeta, and we can actually just rewrite that as zeta as a function of z. If I just solve for zeta, we get uh, z minus z naught e to the minus i alpha. Okay, so let's ap let's apply this now. We've got our function uh, zeta as a function of z, and we're going to uh, plug that into these equations up here uh, to get the complex potential and the complex velocity in our new z plane. So um, first of all, let's start off with flow over a cylinder in the zeta plane. So uh, so if we look over here at, at zeta. Um, the flow over a cylinder in zeta can be written as v infinity zeta plus r squared over zeta uh, plus i times gamma over 2 pi natural log of zeta plus c, some complex constant. Okay, so this is just flow. We've seen this equation before. This is just flow over a cylinder. And we've swapped out, usually we put it in terms of z, but we put it in terms of zeta here because we're, we're uh, starting in this zeta plane on the left-hand side. And I would like to take that flow. Uh, well, uh, first, actually, let's just write the complex velocity. So if you take the derivative of uh, phi1 with respect to zeta, you get the complex velocity, which is v infinity 1 minus uh, r squared over zeta squared. Uh, plus i gamma over 2 pi 1 over zeta. Okay, so that's just the derivative um, of phi 1 with respect to zeta. Okay, so um, these are the same equations we've seen before for the circular cylinder, um, uh, just in the zeta plane, and that's centered at the origin. So now let's plug in um, uh, this equation right here. Uh, let's plug that into um, into these equations above, into uh, into this uh, phi two and w two to find out what the complex potential and velocity are in the z plane after we've translated and rotated according to uh, this equation right here. Okay, so uh, what we'll get is a phi two of z is equal to, and all we, all we need to do here is plug in phi1 z of zeta, or, or zeta of z. So we can just plug this guy in for zeta in, into phi1, okay? So what we'll get there is v infinity times zeta, and instead of zeta, I'm going to do z minus z naught e to the minus i alpha uh, plus r squared over and instead of zeta here in the denominator again we're going to do z minus z naught uh, and then i can bring that e to the i alpha up top uh, so that's v infinity and i'll make that a bracket there uh, plus i times gamma over 2 pi natural log of and again i'm going to plug in uh, z minus z naught um, and I'll make this a little bracket e to the minus i alpha. And of course, this could be simplified. But uh, all we're doing is plugging in this equation here uh, for, uh, z for zeta uh, to put that in terms of z. So what we have now is our complex velocity, uh, excuse me, complex potential uh, in the z plane. And we can take the derivative of that uh, to get w2 
of z, take the derivative of that with respect to z. The other way we can get that is just by plugging in this equation here. w2 of z is equal to w1 of zeta, where we're now going to plug in uh, these, uh, z for zeta, or, or this expression here for zeta, and then divide by dz d zeta. So we need a dz d zeta. Um, so let's come over here, dz d zeta. Oops. And uh, let's see, that would be, if we just look at, um, uh, if we look at this expression here, and we could look at either, uh, either term here. So dz d zeta is just e to the i alpha. Or we could look at d zeta dz is e to the minus i alpha. Anyway, uh, so dz d zeta is just e to the i alpha there. Uh, okay, so let's plug that in here for w2. So w2 is equal to w1 of zeta. So we'll come up here to uh, w1 and just plug in, instead of these zetas, we're going to plug in this z here. So what we get is v infinity 1 minus r squared over, and uh, we've got zeta squared there, so we're going to get a z minus z naught squared, and then e to the 2i alpha. Okay, and, um, and then uh, let's see, our next term here is plus i times gamma over 2 pi, 1 over z minus z naught, and uh, again we have e to the i alpha there. And now this whole thing we need to divide, um, so we've got w1 of zeta, where we plugged in th this expression for zeta, and now we need to divide that whole thing by uh, dz d zeta, so divide that whole thing by e to the i alpha, okay, so this is separate here. Okay, so let's just simplify this. Um, uh, what we get here then would be equal to v infinity uh, e to the minus i alpha uh, plus, and I'm going to actually pull in the gamma term next, so plus i times gamma over 2 pi times uh, 1 over z minus z naught and the e to the i alpha cancels there. Um, and then the next term we have is minus v infinity times r squared over z minus z naught squared e to the i alpha. Okay, so this equation here is uh, the equation that we developed earlier. So this is w2 of z. This is the equation that we developed in a previous video for the um, for the flow of uh, in the z plane for uh, flow over a cylinder that had been rotated and translated, you know, by z naught here and rotated by alpha. And so this is the same equation that we came up with before. Uh, what we've done here is treated it as a conformal transformation from zeta uh, to z. Um, it, through this equation here, that z was equal to zeta e to the i alpha plus z naught. Uh, we could solve for zeta and uh, and then use this more general transformation equation here to get the complex velocity in, uh, uh, in the z plane um, from a complex velocity in the original zeta plane. Okay, and we're going to apply this over and over for some different transformations now. This is just a general relation here. Uh, these equations here are just general. As long as we have some equation here that relates z and zeta, and as long as that uh, transformation is conformal, uh, then we can apply these equations here. Uh, we'll talk about some of the constraints uh, in this uh, approach coming up. And, uh, and you might notice that this particular transformation cons uh, conserves the shape of the streamline. So the shape of of this streamline and, and the shape of the actual object are the same in the zeta plane and the z plane. They've just been rotated and translated, okay? But not all transformations, not all conformal transformations that we're going to apply here uh, preserve the shape of the streamlines. 
we're going to find that, that some transformations can stretch or skew these streamlines, uh, but, uh, but that the conformal transformations still hold. So we'll cover that in the following videos.